Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend. Hope everybody had a good trading session. Uh, very, very uh, aggressive start to the morning, then kind of uh, no man's land, a bit of a break uh, ahead of tomorrow's uh, more CPI uh, inflation data. And that's kind of, kind of what we start uh, the session off. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much uh, for spending a few moments with us. Uh, all we do is ask if you can like, share, subscribe, uh, all that stuff, and we can hopefully continue uh, to bring you bigger and better value. So, look, the last couple of days, um, you know, there was really a big surprise that the euphoria uh, finally got to the tipping point. If you traded uh, Friday's session, you kind of saw uh, the big, you know, really, really huge reversals uh, in names like uh, SMCI. Uh, you know, really, really big move there, or Friday's highs, uh, names like NVIDIA, really big reversal of Friday's highs. You know, you could go through pretty much uh, the whole list, AMD, pretty much any single uh, semiconductor name. So that really wasn't the surprising part. If you've been watching kind of this broadcast for the last several weeks, yeah, we talked about this. Eventually, the euphoria was going to end. Uh, gravity was going to kick in, and, and eventually anybody who's kept on just buying FOMO off the top of the range, well, you saw what happened, right? You saw exactly what happened, or as we're saying, it's happening. That's exactly what's happening right now. We are in kind of a really big, uh, aggressive backtest of what we've seen now in the last uh, couple of days. The question is, well, is this the start of something more? Is this finally um, the start of the bubble aspect of every single rally that we've seen uh, for the last 25 years and the way that we're going to end uh, exactly the same way. And I, and I think that's a little too early, a little too premature uh, to kind of talk in that direction. Uh, I think it's much more constructive to talk about levels and what the bulls and the bears need uh, to kind of take control of those levels. If you guys remember about a week ago, we had this really big move down. One day the Dow was down like five, 600 points and as it was down 300 and it gave us uh, a line in the sand here, right? And the line in the sand was this 433.65 level on the QQQ and that's the rising 20 day support. Uh, if you look at the rising 20 day support today, it put in a higher low from the last week's channel, but it still tested the 20 day moving average twice now in the last uh, week, week and a half, okay? That's gonna be our line in the sand going forward. Uh, guys, write this down. You got 433.65, okay? That is going to give us a bigger clue, more of a case study of, is this indeed the start of the quote unquote bubble, or was this you know, just another calm, aggressive, sometimes violent pullback, all that into a combination, uh, into the blender and uh, to see what happens next. Again, I'm not going to speculate. I don't think anybody can speak definitively what they, what they think is going to happen next, but there is an obvious rotation uh, out of the high flyers. Matter of fact, if you look at today's uh, if you look at today's high flyer list, or at least the stocks that had been high flyers, they're predominantly semiconductors. You have a little bit of wing stop here, sprayed in here, but you have predominantly semiconductor names, and they were the ones they were taking to the woodshed. Again, this is the group uh, that led the rally higher, so you have to assume when gravity kicks in, this is going to be the group that's going to get taken down first. And if you look at every single one of the really big high flying names, they did give you a really good case study uh, and pivots, potential pivots that could confirm in the future. So let's talk about some of the names, right? Uh, NVIDIA obviously is uh, the biggest one because this one led uh, the market higher. As you can see here in the last two days, it lost the five-day moving average, it lost the 10-day moving average, and it closed right above it. So now the 10-day becomes kind of a big deal, right? If you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand, you can see here how it stopped perfectly on the 10-day moving average. So the 10-day of NVIDIA 
is the line in the sand going forward, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's the next day, or whether it's never, right? But at least we have a point of reference here. Look at AMD, right? AMD is kind of the same thing. AMD had this big move, inverted hammer, which is a sell signal, came down to the 10-day moving average. Again, this is the line in the sand. And you can go through every, pretty much every semiconductor name, it's gonna show you exactly the same thing. Where the curveball came in today was not the heavy selling in the AMDs, the semiconductors of the world. The heavy selling came in today on the other bang, the other other um, fang names, right? The other Magnificent Seven. What was the last time you saw a move like this on Meta, right? Meta was down today, you know, a lot. Okay, Meta was down at one point about thirty dollars on the day. At one point, it lost the 20-day moving average. It got back above it. And now we're going to watch the lows of the 20-day. I'm assuming uh, if the Qs lose the 20-day, so will Meta. You know, look at, for example, uh, a name like, um, let me see what else I can give you a point of reference to. Meta was kind of like the, the, the big deal. If you look at the names that got beat up, right, beat up for the last three, four weeks, they all rallied. And the theory behind that is, well, the money came out of the ones that were really, really good, taking the market higher, and it went into the have-nots, right? Google, second day in a row, it rallied. Uh, Apple, second day in a row, it rallied. And Tesla finally had uh, finally had a green day, although it put in an inverted hammer. Again, inverted hammer is usually not a good thing. The point of the matter is, you can make a very, very, you know, you can make a compelling argument that this is a bullish case or a bearish case. Well, here's the bullish uh, argument. The bullish argument is yes, while the high flyers are resting, the money flow now is going to go to the have nots, the trailers, right? The old leaders, the Teslas, the Apples, and the Googles. Maybe, maybe not, right? The bearish sign of this is, well, the money's coming out of these names. It's a temporary fix. These stocks have not had uh, the light of day for the last three weeks, even the last two months. You can make an argument. This is just a knee-jerk reaction. This is a temporary you know, situation. This is a Band-Aid on a severed head. The severed head is still the severed head. And that's a very, very good combination as well. But at least this point is we don't have to guess. Right now, for example, Tesla uh, is sitting in a range. If you guys remember the last time Tesla sat in the range, was for the last, you know, for the last month or so, and it came out of the range and gave us 20, 25 points in three days. So I don't care how long Tesla sits in this range because we know it's either going to get back above the five-day moving average and continue to dead cat bounce a la uh, Apple out of Google, or it's finally going to get back to the bottom of the range here and not only confirm the daily chart, is going to also confirm the weekly chart, which is sitting here and building below this linear regression line and below daily supply. And that's a very, very big deal. If I'm a betting man and I'm not, I probably probably guess in the next couple of days, Tesla sees the lows versus the highs. But hey, that could change in a heartbeat, right? I have no problem trading the upside of this thing as well. Again, I'm not here to be right or wrong. I'm here to gauge risk. I'm here to collect data and trade on the channel that the market is confirming, not the channel that I want, but the market is confirming. And that's exactly where we enter tomorrow's session. Again, you can see here, Tesla's gotten rejected back to back day off the five-day moving average, and also Tesla has held the bottom range now four times in a row. Something has to give here, right? Something really has to give here, and I'm gonna wait patiently for it to see which side actually confirms. One interesting, uh, one interesting setup potentially for tomorrow is ARM. And the reason why I say that, tomorrow I believe ARM uh, has a lockup period uh, which expires, which basically means insiders can sell stock. 20 years ago, this was considered a free trade. This is a free money trade. What I mean by that was 20 years ago, when you knew a company was going to come out of their uh, lockup period, all you had to do is short the stock into the close. You woke up the next morning, pre-market, the stock is down three, four, five dollars That changed about 10 years ago. And now it's a 50-50 shot. I've seen stocks come out of lockup periods, okay, come out of lockout periods, trap shorts in the morning down two three dollars go red to green and take out the previous day's channel that's on the table so tomorrow i'm kind of watching this thing from both sides if it tomorrow washes out in the morning uh washes out in the morning starts going green i'm going to start looking for ranges to take it back to the upside 
However, on the other side is if it gaps up for whatever reason pre-market and they trap shorts pre-market and it goes red later, then I will be looking at today's range to see uh, if this thing uh, has more legs to the downside. The, the, the coolest part, what I did see about uh, today's session was kind of like the, the anti-trade on the analyst recommendation. This was kind of a big clue today, what was gonna happen with the market. You had NVIDIA, upgraded this morning by Mizuho. And what happened was NVIDIA got sold off initially about 30 points. It came back, it did very, very well at some point, and then it came all the way back again, which basically tells me is this is the first time on an upgrade they sold the stock. That's not usually a good thing. This morning also SMCI got downgraded and we'll show you the pivots in a second. This thing went down 100 today. So, you know, we, the market is setting up in a very, very delicate way. I think the bears right now, just in the last couple of days, are obviously showing a lot more control than they did uh, probably in the last 14 months. What I'm seeing from, from this point, considering we already know where our line in the sand is on the queues, this uh, 433.65 level, I'm seeing here, at least from, from early indications, that the bulls, the bears know they have a good hand. They're just waiting to kind of borrow a term from the poker world they're kind of borrowing time. They want to see one more card uh, come in on the river to see if they actually have a strong hand. That's why this 20-day moving average uh, is very, very strong. So let's talk about today's pivots. Um, today was really aggressive right from the word go. The problem is after the first 10 minutes, and it was great, the first 10 minutes was phenomenal, the market kind of went into a holding pattern ahead of tomorrow's CPI, which is understandable, a little annoying, but hey, is anybody going to really, really complain after uh, after catching one of these pivots? And the problem was, not really a problem, uh, but the situation was that all three of these pivots went at once. I traded personally in the video today. If you traded today Tesla, excuse me, if you traded today Square, that was great. If you traded today SMCI, that was great. But literally all three went at the same time. So this was the pivot here on NVIDIA. 865, it builds below, it can flush. NVIDIA got killed i mean absolutely killed on that 865 break if you see a look look at the 60 minute view so here was the 865 break right here is the 865 break and this thing just got absolutely i'm sorry here it is right here it got absolutely destroyed went down about 30 points really really quickly and started ramp, ramping up it actually went green at some point but this was an absolutely phenomenal trade smci was exactly the same thing, right? SMCI was exactly the same thing here. Uh, SMCI 1090 held back to back days. If it builds below, it can flush. The damn thing went to 1025. Incredible move here. Uh, Square 8185 and 8329 to the upside. Two big levels. Nice move. I mean, really, really nice move on Square. Uh, as you can see here by, you know, you can see here by the 60 minute view. It got above this whole channel here, got above this the 8130s, got above the 8330s, and went all the way to 84. Really, really uh, big move uh, there as well. Other than that, you know, other than that, that's it. I mean, nothing really happened for the rest of the day. Uh, AMD, we put it out pre-market, 205.60 needs to build the flush. By the time the market opened, AMD was 201, so I don't think anybody traded it. But boy, oh boy, you really need a lot today. You had NVIDIA. You had Square and you had SMCI and everything else was kind of just up and down, up and down. Uh, nothing really matters. So that's it, guys. That's it. Tomorrow, a uh, very, very pivotal day. We got uh, we got uh, CPI data coming out at uh, 8.30 a.m. And now let's see if the bears actually do have control or was this just a minor two-day blip on the radar for the bulls? And tomorrow we start the resumption back to the upside. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.